So guys, it's video two. I'm back for another review. Thanks to all those who liked and commented on the last video. And I'll repeat that again. If you enjoy this one, please hit the like button, subscribe and comment. Your feedback would be much appreciated. So today we're looking at a watch that since its release in 2018 has been highly regarded as a modern classic in the world of horology. I'm talking of course about the Tudor Black Bay 58. A watch that mixes the beauty of classic dive watch style and elegance with modern internals, robustness and reliability. I mean, just look at this watch. Isn't it just a wonderful timepiece? Let's discuss its features and what makes this watch such a desirable piece among fellow watch lovers. So the Tudor Black Bay 58 has a 39 millimeter case with a thickness of 11.9 millimeters, a lug to lug of 47 millimeters, and a lug width of 20 millimeters, which is a typical sweet spot for many wrists. Let's see how it looks on my wrist. Let's just get rid of this Seiko Dress KX. That's for another review, another wonderful watch. How does the Tudor Black Bay 58 look on my wrist? Look at that. Isn't it just beautiful? Now this watch easily fits underneath a shirt cuff, making it suitable to wear on formal occasions. And it has that sporty look as well, so you can wear it dressed down. Just notice how the ends of the case fold over so that it hugs the wrist. Beautiful. The case is constructed of stainless steel, and that's 316L stainless steel, unlike the modern divers from its older brother Rolex, which uses 904L stainless steel. The top of the case has a brushed finish, while the sides have a mirror polish finish, which is executed wonderfully. And also along with this, if we look between the sides and the top of the case, we have a beautiful chamfered edge. Excellent. It gives it some refinement for those who love detail, if you're like me. The case features a 60 click unidirectional bezel with a black anodized aluminium insert featuring rose gold markers, adding to that vintage aesthetic. It has a red triangle for the main indicator and that surrounds a C3 Superluminova loom pip. Now the action on this bezel is without a doubt the best I've ever experienced. Just listen to this. Ooh. Wonderful. It's no easy task to strike a balance between smooth, tight and tactile tolerances but this does it so well. But then again, this is a watch manufactured by Rolex, so can we expect quality that's any less than brilliant? Well, of course not. At three o'clock, we have a large screw down crown, and this pays homage to the original Tudor Submariner big crown. It's signed with the traditional Tudor logo and features a coined edge which gives it a decent level of grip and matches the coined edge on the unidirectional bezel. Now I'm not sure how effective these coined edges would be when it comes to grip for professional diving, but let's be honest, as robust and solid as this feels, who's really going diving in this pretty little thing? Well, certainly not me. However, if you do choose to go diving with this, that screw down crown does provide 200 meters of water resistance. So it's built for purpose. Now let's talk about that dial. It's a matte black dial with rose gold minute markers decorating the outer edge of the dial. The rose gold theme continues with the printed Tudor logo and text, along with the three lines of text towards the bottom of the dial, indicating it's 200 meters of water resistance and chronometer certification. The hour markers 
come in the form of traditional Rolex and Tudor Submariners with rectangles at 3, 6 and 9 o'clock, a triangle at 12 o'clock and circles for the remaining markers. And then we have Tudor's identity here with the traditional snowflake hands for the hour, minute and seconds. Now some say they prefer the Mercedes hands of the Rolex and even though I do really like those as well, I think it's nice to have the snowflake hands for this particular model of the Tudor uh, because it gives it its own identity and I think they look just as good as the Mercedes hands. All the hour markers and the hands are gilted with rose gold, continuing that black and rose gold theme and that beautiful vintage style. All of this combined uh, gives it an understated but beautiful and elegant look. Continuing on the subject of the markers and the hands, they've all been generously filled with C3 Super Luminova. And this particular model is executed with a creamy tone rather than the traditional white. And that carries on that, again, vintage look. Now, some people uh, don't like this kind of look, but I don't mind it. And what I like about this particular model is it's not overly yellow or orange like some of these vintage inspired watches. It has a nice balance. It's just enough to let you know it's there without being overbearing. What I also like is that this particular color does not affect the brightness of the Superluminova. When fully charged and then put into dark conditions, it shines brilliantly bright and lasts a very long time. Protecting the dial, we have a domed sapphire crystal, which adds to the elegance of this vintage inspired watch. What lies underneath that dial? Well, it's an automatic movement, the automatic caliber MT5402, which has a silicone hairspring. It's a COSC certified movement and runs at minus two to plus four seconds per day. It moves with 28,800 vibrations per hour and has an excellent 70 hours of power reserve, which means you can take it off for a few days and come back to it and still find it running accurately. Now I've personally found the watch to be highly accurate in my long-term use. Let's now talk about straps and bracelets. When I originally ordered my Black Bay 58, the bracelet version was out of stock and the leather strap renderings looked really nice. So here's the leather strap that my Black Bay 58 came with. It looks really nice and it's well made as you'd expect. It has a nice Tudor shield clasp with ceramic ball bearings. I'll just show you. And that should help it to last a long time when it comes to wear and tear. However, when the delivery came and I looked at the strap, it's a lot lighter than the computer renderings from Tudor would have you uh, believe. So I was more of a fan of the darker colour. And if I'm honest with myself, I always prefer bracelets with dive watches. So what I did was ordered a bracelet from, guess where? Strap code. Now, if you look at this bracelet, it looks like it was actually made with the watch. It looks like a stock bracelet when you look at the finishing. It's nearly identical. It has solid end links and solid links throughout. Those links are screwing links, which makes it easy to add and remove links for adjustments. And although you don't get the ceramic ball bearings, this is well constructed. It's very well constructed. And if you look there, it has the milled clasp. And it also has six micro adjustments as opposed to three that comes with the stock bracelet. It tapers really nicely as well. I think that has a nice taper and I think it looks better than the stock bracelet. 
when it comes to the taper and also there's no faux rivets which I'm not a particular I'm not particularly a fan of those things wouldn't have been a deal breaker for me if the bracelet version was available but having this I do feel it looks better it's better aesthetically that's my personal opinion should we talk about price then this watch retails brand new in the UK for around £2,520 on a leather strap or a NATO strap. And if you prefer the bracelet version, that retails for around £2,760. Now, on this particular subject, value for money is quite subjective. Because some may feel it's overpriced. Some may feel, oh, well, it's just a watch. But others may look at this as value for money, considering the Rolex and Tudor heritage, the iconic original design, the in-house Rolex movement, and the high-end fit and finish, along with value retention. Now, I lean firmly in the second camp, but I'm not going to judge anybody else if they feel differently. This for me is the almost perfect all-round watch and I'm thoroughly impressed every time I take this out of the collection and place it on the wrist. Criticisms. As I mentioned in my first video, no watch is perfect and this includes the Tudor Black Bay 58. But saying that, I don't really have much to criticise this watch on, as it's such a stunning piece and well made. I would have preferred this to have a ceramic bezel, crown guards, a glide lock system, and maybe some brighter, whiter hour markers. But I guess we'll have to see if Tudor decides to release a modern Tudor Submariner, rather than one that gives a nod to previous models and if they do so <laughs> hopefully it's at a reasonable Tudor price and is available with authorised dealers <laughs> let's wait and see come on Tudor well that was my review of my favourite watch of my collection what are your thoughts on the Tudor Black Bay 58 Please share some comments and remember to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video and subscribe for more content. Thanks again. See you soon.